Hello everyone, my name is Kari Tauring and I'd like to talk about the winter sky. The winter sky must have been very important to our ancient uh, Scandinavian ancestors. Without light pollution and with the sun goddess uh, going under the earth and not coming back up for many many days in a row, or should I say nights in a row, the winter sky must have been uh, especially bright and especially important. The constellation that is called Orion by the Greeks and Romans marks the arrival of winter in the Northern Hemisphere. And Jacob Grimm, the um, scholar who wrote most about our ancestral uh, folk tales and uh, language, he reported that some of our ancestors knew this constellation by the name Frigga Rock or Frigg's Distaff. Frigg is the great goddess, the All Mother, and uh, her name means beloved. She was the wife of Odin, whose name means the spirit. And she is known by a distaff. Um, a distaff is a uh, stick that has been created um, into a basket to hold the unspun stuff of either wool or flax. She's most commonly um, related to flax spinning. Um, and this uh, basket was at the end of a long stick and it was lodged in a woman's belt so that she could carry the materials needed for spinning everywhere she went. The distaff was a powerful symbol for women and for women's uh, powerful role in the community. Uh, distaff um, is Oftentimes when you do genealogy and they say they're going to follow the distaff side, that means the matrilineal uh, side of your heritage. So um, the distaff was often found in the graves of powerful women of the Iron Age, the volur, uh, the staff carrying women. Uh, they were known by carrying a distaff. And um, they were able to, um, it was said they were able to see the strands of fate and um, sometimes prophesy about what would happen and sometimes even affect the things that might happen with their magical words and, and actions. Um, the Norns are the fate women of Norse tradition. They are also pictured with a distaff and a spindle because the distaff holds the unspun stuff and the spindle holds the urlog or the that which has been spun. The fates of all humans and gods alike. So the other symbol is a spindle. And the spindle would have been a, a bottom whorl, warp, uh, bottom whorl spindle, such as this one. So now, uh, the staff, the distaff, would be lodged into the belt like this, and the spindle would be attached to the unspun stuff in this manner, you see, and then spun together and the more that we spin, you can see the, the threads starting to um, starting to form and we spin and we spin and it drops down below the belt and then when we have a um, 
long enough thread, we bring the spindle up like this and we wrap it onto the whorl like this and then we start spinning again. So you can see this uh, idea of the distaff being up here and the spindle here either spinning down below the belt or being held this way as we begin to wind that spun thread. And so when you look at the constellation of Orion or Frigarok, you can see that there's the belt and then there's the shoulders here and this part here is the distaff and the spindle is either spinning below the belt here or being held out in this manner to wind the the new spun thread onto the spindle. You know, a spindle is another powerful tool of women's work and women's magical practice. With this simple tool, they could spin every inch of cloth that was worn. Uh, and, you know, it took the fleece of 700 sheep to be spun. Well, you had to carve it and or, uh, clip it and card it and put it in long rove and then spin it, then weave it and then uh, uh, sew it and fell it. And 700 sheep to make one Viking sail. So you can think about how much spinning Frigg would have to do uh, across the sky all winter long in order to, um, you know, uh, create a sail, right? Um, so it's related to fate and magical practice and trance and prophecy. So either her left hand might be uh, throwing the spindle out this way to wind it, or the spindle could be uh, hanging below the belt here. And what is below this belt is really interesting. Um, the names of the stars that create this constellation and what the stars are. One I find interesting is um, the one that we call Betelgeuse, but was a mistranslation of the Arabic Yad al Yosa, which means uh, hand of the, the center one, or in some uh, interpretations, hand of the mysterious woman. And then the stars that make up the part below the belt, which could either be the spindle or the, the, the tails of the um, belt, aren't the middle one isn't really a star at all. It's a nebula. And um, in 2006, the Hubble telescope um, picked up some images of the nebula and um, they were amazing because there were um, images that were contained of over a th of thousands of stars in different stages of their lives and this nebula is called a stellar nursery because it is where stars are born so one of the nearest, it's one of the nearest and most active stellar nurseries in our home galaxy. So who but Mother Frigg, the beloved, knows, uh, who knows everything and says nothing, could contain the knowledge of the births and deaths of thousands of stars. So what surrounds her also has meaning. There's Sirius, the dog star, that comes up next to her. And 
in the winter tales, Frigg is equated, uh, or she is called the mistress of the hunt, along with her husband Odin. So the, the wild hunt or the Asgard ride uh, is the wintertime pro procession um, of, of spirit and, and godly powers on, on through the earth. But she moves along uh, with the hunting, the hunting hound and collects the souls of the innocent, especially children who have died prematurely. And she brings them to her great uh, home in Gladsheim, her great hall in Gladsheim, or happy home. Taurus, the bull, is on this side uh, preceding her. And she has been often equated with the goddess Nerthus, who the Roman historian Tacitus described in 95 CE. She visits the homes of, and villages of all the people being pulled along in a cart drawn by oxen. During these months, there's no war. Everyone lays down their weapons and celebrates the fertility that the goddess brings to their fields and homes. And then before that is the Pleiades. The Pleiades have been called the Seven Sisters, but they could just as well be called the Handmaids of Frigg. She has between seven and nine handmaidens that accompany her, some who she sends before her. Some carry her belongings, some stand guard, some deliver messages, and some are healers. So, when I look up at the winter sky, I don't see a great hunter or warrior with a sword pointing at my face. I see a great mother, a fate goddess, who's spinning out the universe for me and connecting me to every star in the night sky. There's an old runic inscription from the ninth century on a wooden distaff and it has had a new interpretation uh, that makes so much more sense because of what it's used for and it says dressed from above the spindle spins starry-eyed girl will have a fine thin thread I think of this when I see Frigerak in the winter darkness. We are made from stardust, and I am a fine thin thread that the beloved spins. And then, when I think like this, I don't feel so small, connected as I am to all the other spun threads in this tapestry of life. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next on the conjunction of Thor and Loki in the goat cart. Tuesday talk.